Reasons for not having sex according to Stoicism. Two reasons not to have sex according to philosophy. Have you ever thought about how our deepest passions and desires can influence our peace of mind, our inner peace? Today, we delve into a topic that is often surrounded by taboos and misunderstandings, but at the same time is a driving force in the lives of many. Sex. But wait a second before you jump to conclusions. This video is not a manual to improve your sex life. Quite the opposite. Let's explore something bold and challenging. The philosophical reasons, from the perspective of Stoicism, for not having sex. Sit down, put your mind in philosophical mode, and prepare for a conversation that will challenge your beliefs, make you question your actions, and maybe, just maybe, lead you down a path less traveled but more enriching. Ready for the challenge? Let's go. 1. Self-Control Friends, let's begin our exploration with a fundamental aspect of Stoic philosophy that we can all apply in our lives. Self-Control I know that we are in a world that often tells us to follow our impulses, to do what feels good in the moment. But let me tell you something. Sex, although one of the most intimate and pleasurable experiences in life, is also one of the most powerful in its ability to alter our rationality and self-control. The Stoics, with their focus on self-discipline, teach us that we are not simply animals driven by our desires. We have the ability to reason, to choose, and to control our actions. Do you know what the true power of an individual is? It's not how much pleasure you can get, but how much you can control yourself. Imagine having the kind of self-control that allows you to make decisions completely aligned with your values and life goals. That's pure power, friends. And yes, abstaining from sex can be a way to exercise that control. This doesn't mean that sex is bad, but the act of consciously abstaining can be a practical exercise in self-discipline. It can teach you a lot about your drives, your desires, and ultimately, who you are as a person. By mastering that impulse, you are also honing your ability to master other impulses and distractions that could be holding you back from your greatest goals in life. The key here is intentionality. If you're going to engage in any activity, even something as natural as sex, do so with full awareness and understanding of your motivations and their long-term consequences. When you exercise self-control, you take the driver's seat in your life. You stop being a passenger driven by desires and circumstances and take control of your destiny. So the next time you find yourself in a situation where self-control is at stake, remember that you have the strength within you to choose, and that choice, my friends, can be the first step toward living a more stoic, more meaningful, and ultimately more rewarding life. 2. Detachment from ephemeral pleasures If the first point made you think, get ready because we are going to delve even deeper into the wise teachings of Stoic philosophy. This time we're going to talk about detachment from ephemeral pleasures. Modern society constantly bombards us with the idea that pleasure is good, that we should seek it at every opportunity and avoid pain at all costs. But have you ever stopped to think about how long that pleasure really lasts? Often it is momentary, fleeting, and disappears almost as quickly as it came, leaving us longing for more. The Stoics teach us something very different, that true peace and happiness come from detachment, from not allowing our emotional well-being to depend on things that are beyond our control, and yes, that includes sexual pleasure. Detachment from ephemeral pleasures does not mean that you cannot enjoy the good things in life. It means that you do not become a slave to those pleasures, that you don't let them dictate your actions or consume your thinking. Imagine if you could free yourself from the constant need to seek external gratification. Imagine how much more mental energy you would have available, how much clearer your focus would be, and how much more aligned your actions would be with your true goals and values. That's what detachment can do for you. By practicing detachment, you can transform your life in ways you never imagined. You do not become someone without emotions or desires, but someone who deeply understands what truly matters. You become, in essence, the master of yourself, and in that self-mastery, you will find a much more lasting and meaningful satisfaction than any ephemeral pleasure could provide. So, are you ready to start practicing detachment and free yourself from the chain of fleeting pleasures? I know you can do it. The strength is in you. The first step is to recognize that you have the power to choose, so choose wisely. Choose to be in control. Choose the freedom that comes with detachment. 3. 
Docus on long-term goals. After exploring the importance of self-control and detachment from ephemeral pleasures, we are faced with an equally revolutionary truth, the importance of focusing on long-term goals. Think of the great Stoic philosophers, Seneca, Epictetus, Marcus Aurelius. They weren't looking for immediate gratification. They were committed to virtues such as wisdom, justice, and courage, goals that take a lifetime to cultivate. That is the essence of a long-term goal. When we are caught up in the pursuit of immediate pleasures, we lose perspective on what truly matters. But when we focus on long-term goals, we change the entire game. Suddenly, you're not stuck in the endless cycle of wanting, getting momentarily enjoying and then wanting more. Instead, you are on a path with a sense of direction, a path that leads you toward the best version of yourself. Now focusing on long-term goals doesn't mean you should ignore everything else. What it means is that your perspective changes. You stop being driven by what you want now and start moving based on what will be best for you in the future. And that has a powerful impact, not only on the results you get, but also on the person you become in the process. This approach frees you from the emotional roller coaster that comes with seeking immediate pleasures. Instead, you find a much deeper sense of peace and contentment because you know you're working towards something that really matters. It's time for you to take inventory of your goals. Are they aligned with a long-term vision for your life? If not, maybe it's time to make some adjustments. And remember, long-term goals are like a beacon in the distance. You may not know exactly how you will get there, but as long as you keep your gaze on it, you will always have a direction in which to move. 4. Strengthen Emotional Relationships After addressing the importance of focusing on long-term goals, it's time to take it a step further and talk about something we often underestimate, strengthening our emotional relationships. Yes, you heard right. If Stoic philosophy has taught us anything, it is that human connections are fundamental to a life well-lived. The great Stoic philosophers such as Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus tell us about the importance of social duty and empathy. We cannot be an island. We are social beings by nature, and our relationships are a mirror in which we can see our best and worst qualities reflected. Now you might ask, what does this have to do with abstaining from sexual relations in a Stoic approach? Well, by strengthening our emotional relationships, we prevent fleeting sexual desire from distorting our judgment and compromising the quality of our interactions. In other words, sex can be wonderful, but if it becomes the primary focus, we might overlook the subtleties and deeper beauties of human connection. Focus on building relationships that have real meaning, learn to listen, to share, to be vulnerable, and to give without expecting something in return. When you do this, you create a safe space for emotional growth, both for yourself and the people around you. This, in turn, strengthens your character and makes you a more balanced and emotionally resilient person. Don't you find it liberating? Instead of being stuck on the hamster wheel of instant gratification and constant disappointment, you rise to a level where you can enjoy deeper, more meaningful and lasting connections. So, if you're ready to take your life to the next level, start investing in your emotional relationships. Learn to love more deeply, forgive more quickly, and appreciate more fully. In this investment lies the secret of a full life, rich in emotional experiences. 5. Prevent unwanted consequences. At this point, it is time to get into a slightly more pragmatic but equally crucial topic, preventing unintended consequences. Yes, we are talking about those complications that we often forget in the heat of the moment, but that can have a lasting impact on our lives. Stoic philosophers have always stressed the importance of living a virtuous life, and one of those virtues is prudence. Prudence not only means thinking before acting, but also considering the future implications of our actions. In the context of sex, this could include everything from preventing sexually transmitted diseases to avoiding complicated relationships, or even, in some cases, unwanted pregnancies. Now, we're not saying that sex is bad. In reality, it can be a beautiful expression of love and a vital component of human intimacy. But it also has the power to become a vector for serious complications when not approached with due care and consideration. By taking a more stoic and reflective approach, you can evaluate whether the sexual act you are considering truly aligns with your deepest principles and long-term well-being. Ask yourself, will this action bring me closer to the person I want to be? Will it bring something positive to my life? Am I prepared for the possible consequences? These questions are not just mental exercises. 
They are practical tools that help you live a more deliberate and conscious life. And believe me, that's powerful. Preventing unwanted consequences not only protects you and your partner, but also strengthens you as an individual, making you more aware, more responsible, and ultimately more in tune with the stoic philosophy of living a virtuous and meaningful life. 6. Maintain Mental Clarity Let's now dive into another topic that is dear to Stoic philosophy, maintaining mental clarity. It's amazing how, in the modern world, we are constantly bombarded by distractions and stimuli that seek to divert our attention. And yes, sex can be one of those stimuli. But let's stop for a moment. The Stoics teach us the importance of ataraxia, a state of tranquility and mental clarity free of emotional disturbances. It is in this state where we find our best version, capable of making more rational decisions aligned with our fundamental values. So what happens when we allow our sexual urges to cloud that clarity? We can end up making hasty decisions that not only affect our emotional well-being, but can also lead us down paths that do not align with our long-term goals. Mental clarity is like a calm lake. Imagine throwing a stone into that lake. The waves disturb the calm and create a distortion on the surface. Similarly, Making impulsive decisions in the sexual sphere can create ripples in our mental clarity, leading us to states of confusion, guilt, or regret. Now, the key here is not to avoid sex or any other pleasure in life, but to approach it with a clear and conscious mindset. Is this the person I want to share an intimate connection with? Will this sexual act improve my life and that of my partner? Will it lead to me being happier in the long run? If you can answer these questions with a resounding and conscious yes, then you are on the right track. Let us remember that mental clarity is one of our most powerful tools in the search for a full and meaningful life. Preserving that clarity is, in many ways, an act of self-love and respect for our most authentic essence. 7. Energy Conservation Now is the time to talk about a concept that, although it may sound a bit abstract, is absolutely central to the life of anyone who aspires to live according to Stoic principles, energy conservation. In this constantly moving society where we are asked to always be on, it is no wonder that many of us feel burned out. And yes, sex, like any other human activity, also consumes energy. But the key question is, is that energy being invested in a way that contributes to our long-term well-being, or is it simply dissipated in momentary pleasures? Stoics are big supporters of channeling our energy effectively, directing it toward actions and goals that really matter. In other words, it is crucial that we consider where we are spending our life energy. Are we putting it into activities that foster our personal growth, strengthen our relationships, and contribute to our peace of mind? Or are we wasting it on instant gratification that leaves us empty and exhausted? Think about it. Each sexual act can be a wonderful and connective experience but it can also be a drain of energy if it does not align with our deepest values and goals. Sometimes it is better to conserve that energy for higher goals, like a life project that requires our full attention, or a relationship that needs to be nurtured with love and care, rather than consumed by fleeting impulses. Betting on energy conservation is not a call to abstinence, but rather an invitation to be more aware of how and with whom we share our vital energy. Because at the end of the day, energy is finite, and once spent, it takes time and effort to recover. You are the owner of your energy. Are you going to squander it? Or are you going to invest it wisely in building a life that resonates with your most authentic self? So take charge, conserve your energy for what really matters, and stay on the path to a life full of meaning and purpose. You have the power to decide. Avoid emotional dependency in this. 8. Emotional Dependence Stoic philosophy teaches us the importance of autarky, which means being emotionally and mentally self-sufficient in the pursuit of a life well-lived. We cannot allow ourselves to be slaves to our emotions, much less the emotions that others may generate in us. And this is where sex can become a double-edged sword, especially if it becomes a mechanism to gain validation, love, or even just attention. Yes, sex can be a beautiful experience, a form of deep and meaningful connection with another person. But when it becomes the only means through which we believe we can obtain love or validation, we become emotionally dependent. This is not the path to emotional freedom that the Stoics promote. Why put the key to your happiness in someone else's pocket? Why allow your inner peace to depend on something as volatile as another person's attention or affection? That's a risky bet, 
and more often than not, one that will leave us disappointed. So what to do? First, you need to cultivate your own inner garden to speak in stoic terms. You need to know that you are enough on your own, that you have the power and ability to create happiness and meaning from within. By doing so, any relationship you have will become an addition to your already rich life, not a prerequisite to feeling complete. Focus on building a strong relationship with yourself before looking for it in others. Take an inventory of your qualities, value your merits, and work on your defects. Not to make another person happy, but to grow and evolve as a human being. Remember, avoiding emotional dependence is not synonymous with avoiding human connections. It's about having the wisdom to know where to place our emotional energy and the strength to not let our inner peace be dictated by the actions or feelings of others. 9. Improve self-esteem. Now we will talk about a topic that goes hand in hand with everything we have discussed so far. Self-esteem. Self-esteem is not simply how you feel about yourself on a good day. It is the durable, resilient image you have of who you are at your core. It's easy to feel good about ourselves when everything is going well, but the true measure of self-esteem is how we feel when things get difficult. Stoic philosophy reminds us that sex or any other ephemeral pleasure is not a viable solution to improving our self-esteem. Yes, it can offer instant gratification and a temporary increase in how we feel about ourselves. But what then? Once the moment has passed, we are back where we started, or even worse, we feel a void that seems even bigger than before. So how does one improve self-esteem from a stoic perspective? It begins with self-awareness, with knowing ourselves deeply, understanding our strengths and weaknesses. Instead of seeking external validation, we should develop our own internal metrics for success and satisfaction. This means practicing virtues such as wisdom, courage, justice, and self-discipline. By living by these principles, you are not only more respectful of yourself, but you are also a person that others will respect and value. Improving self-esteem is a journey, not a destination. It is a continuous process of self-discovery, self-reflection, and self-improvement. When you take the path of Stoic philosophy, you realize that you don't need ephemeral pleasures to validate your existence or make you feel good about yourself. So the next time you find yourself in a situation where you're tempted to use sex or any other pleasure as a way to feel better about yourself, pause, breathe, and remember that your value does not come from passing experiences, but from the solid and virtuous character that you are building every day. 10. Respect personal values and principles. And here we are at the end of this incredible journey through the stoic reasons to consider sexual abstinence as a conscious choice. But before concluding, I want to talk to you about something fundamental not only for this topic but for life in general. Respect for your own values and principles. One of the most precious gems of Stoic philosophy is its emphasis on living in accordance with nature, which includes adhering to a solid set of values and principles. This is not the kind of treasure you can find in fleeting pleasures. It's something you build day by day, decision after decision. Imagine yourself in a situation where you feel pressured whether by your partner, friends, or even society, to compromise your personal values regarding sex. The Stoics would tell you to stop, reflect, and act according to your principles, not according to the expectations of others. When you give in to external pressure, you are not only being unfair to the other person by not giving them your authentic self, but you are also being unfair to yourself. Living according to your values and principles gives you a kind of armor, it is not a barrier that isolates you from the world, but rather a filter that helps you interact with the world in a more meaningful and authentic way. Allow your decisions, including those related to sex, to be clear reflections of who you are and what you value most. This approach not only improves your overall well-being, but also makes any relationship you have richer, deeper, and more connected. If you ever find yourself at a crossroads, remember this principle. Pause and consider which decision most closely aligns with your values. By doing so, you not only respect yourself, but you also invite respect from others, setting a standard of integrity and authenticity. Thank you for joining me on this journey to understand how Stoic wisdom can enrich our understanding of sex and relationships. Each point we have discussed is a step towards a fuller, more conscious and authentic life. In conclusion, remember this. Incredible, true. We've traveled a less conventional path together today, exploring how Stoic philosophy can influence our decisions about something as intimate and personal as sex. 
But let us not forget that the essence of Stoicism is not to limit ourselves, but to free ourselves. Free ourselves from irrational impulses, from society's approval, and from everything that does not align with our deepest values and principles. Sometimes, in the search for pleasure or emotional connection, we forget to ask ourselves essential questions. Will this action lead to sustainable well-being, or is it just a momentary pleasure? Am I compromising my values at this moment? Am I really present in this experience, or am I just a passive participant? If you want to take away one thing from this video, let it be this. You are not alone on this journey towards self-knowledge and self-realization. And every conscious choice you make based on sound principles brings you one step closer to the kind of life you aspire to have. A life where happiness is not a fleeting emotion, but a sustained state of well-being and meaning. So as we move forward, let us always remember that we are the architects of our own lives. The plans are in our hands. It's time to draw lines that reflect our values, not someone else's expectations or standards. Thank you for being here, for opening your mind and your heart to new perspectives. If this content has resonated with you, made you think, or even changed a small part of your life, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and share this video with others who could benefit from it. Until next time, and remember, live consciously, live stoically.